Now that you know the definition of the Fourier series, I would like to just go through an example on how we can apply that and how we can write the Fourier series of certain functions. Now, in our analysis, sometimes you are given problems when you are just given a graph. They will show you a certain graph and you are asked to write the Fourier series of that graph. Well, in terms of practical applications, there should be no surprise because in engineering, some of the things that we deal with are really just graphs. So we write the Fourier series from the graphs that we have. Other times, we will just get the function f of x explicitly defined for us and we would, you know, just have to write the Fourier series of that function. Uh, for today's lesson, let's look at the, the former. So, we are given a certain graph which I've conveniently drawn over here. Um, yeah, this is the graph that we have and it's defined from minus pi to pi. And basically from x equals to minus pi to 0, the, the function gives us 2 and from 0 to pi is given us 1. Now, as you can see, I've wrote, written the word broken over here because it's a term that I like to call it, it's normally a broken function because we need to split up the domain. Now, in Fourier series, you will sometimes get a lot of these broken functions. It shouldn't be any surprise about that. Um, in, not so in calculus. I think calculus, most of the functions are continuous. Maybe something to point out is that when x equals to 0, the function is discontinuous because there's no clear derivative. It can either be here or here. In both cases, the derivative is 0, but really there is no clear derivative of what it should be. Right, so here's the objective of today. Find the Fourier series of this graph over here. So I've written the steps 1 to 4 and I'll go through them in its entirety so really we know what's going on. Okay, step number 1, get the function from the graph. So this is the graph that we have. We need to define a function f of x or else we can't apply the, the Fourier series, the formula. So we will define the function f of x. It's, it's very easy given the graph over here. A function f of x is integrable from minus pi to pi, the endpoints which are given there, where function fx is equal to 2 when x is from minus pi to 0, yes, and from 1 when x is from 0 to pi. Okay, that's all we have to do. Just look at the graph and see whether you can define a function. Now, I must say that for broken functions, most of the time it will be given by a constant because really if you're given curves, you're, you might be confused whether it's x squared or a sine curve. So right now we are sticking along uh, broken functions which are normally given, defined as constants for a certain domain, which is the one over here. Once you have the function, immediately go into the Fourier coefficients. Step number two, find the Fourier coefficients. You don't have to, to waste any more time. So just go straight to find the Fourier co coefficients, a0, an, and bn. Now, I wrote bracket, integration by parts usually needed. Why? Well, because sometimes you're gonna integrate x multiplied by cosine nx or sine nx. So, you know, you do need to use integration by parts. So I guess that should be a prerequisite, but if you're studying this, you probably already know how it, how it goes. Um, it's an early warning. Now, we're not going to use integration by parts for this example because uh, let's just slow things down a bit and really, you know, really know how to apply the formulas. But anyways, it's just an early warning. Right, so A0 is 1 divided by 2 and integrate from minus pi to pi as in given by the in, uh, limits or the boundaries over here of the function f of x. So what I do is that I just simply write, you know, um, 1 divided by 2 pi x and you split up the limits, have to split up the limits because this is a broken function. So we have to integrate from minus pi to 0 of the function that is from minus pi to um, 0, which is 2, and then integrate from 0 to pi of the function, which is given by 1. So make sure that you split up the limits. You might be tempted to combine them because, you know, you see there's a constant, it's a constant. Well, certainly that's, that is not the case because the function essentially is different. Okay, the function is different from the certain limits. In this case, minus pi to 0. So make sure for broken functions, you split up the limits. You evaluate that straightforward process, you get 3 divided by 2. Done. A0, done. A0, 3 divided by 2. Next, move on to an. And yes, things get a little bit uh, trickier, but through careful um, integration uh, techniques, you should be able to be fine. Now, um, a, a is, is equal to 1 divided by pi integrate from minus pi to pi again, a uh, function f of x, but this time you need to multiply by the cosine nx. So if you got um, a n, you will have to multiply by cosine nx, okay? Now, again, so you have to split the limit. The function is different. Remember, function is different from the, for the different uh, boundaries, for the different domain. So you need to split the limits from integrate minus pi to 0 of this and integrate 0 to pi of this. Uh, subsequent examples, and I think I, did, I just recently did one, I sometimes can com uh, combine the integral signs. Now, that is where your algebra needs to be, you know, perfect, really perfect to combine integral signs. But for now, let's just keep them as separately, okay? Uh, yeah, minus integrate minus pi to 0 and 0 to pi. So you integrate them, you get this thing over here, you substitute the limits inside, you get 0. Do not be allowed. I say again, do not be allowed when you sometimes see a n, uh, the Fourier coefficient a n, for whatever value of n, you get 0. Um, that is certainly uh, perfectly normal because you see, we're integrating the cosine function. When we integrate the cosine function, we get the sine function. And the property of the sine function that we will use is that sine nx is equal to 0 for an integer, mul uh, integer uh, multiple of pi. So you take an integer multiple of pi, you take the sine function, you get zero. Uh, just look at the sine graph. So this is perfectly fine. 
If it's equal to zero, let it be zero. Move on. To bn. Now bn integrate minus pi to pi function f of x multiplied by the sine um, nx function. So when it's bn, it's the sine nx function. So you integrate that, go through the, the same steps. We integrating a, a sine function, we get the we integrate the sine function, we get the cosine function, substitute the limits, and this from this step to this step, we are again using another trigonometry identity. One that we will use very often in Fourier analysis, and that is cosine n pi is equals to minus one divided by n. Okay, ah, sorry, minus one to the raised to the power of n. You just have to look at the cosine uh, graph, the cosine graph. Well, essentially, the cosine um, um, integer multiple of pi, the graph, you either get one or minus one. So that will depend on what n is. Okay, so if n is zero, you get one. If n is one, you get minus one, so on and so forth. So this is a key identity. Um, likewise, this is also a key identity. So just be, be, uh, remember that. Right? So this is what we have. So I'm going from here, I'm using the identity, I move to over here. Now I can just simply bring out the constants and this is what I get over here. Something looks like this is common again in Fourier analysis, so that's what we have. So now, step number one completed, we got the function. Step number two, we got the Fourier coefficients. And now, step number three, write the Fourier series. So that's what I'm going to do now. A, N is going to be this one here. B, N is going to be this one here. And A, not is this one over here. So once you get the Fourier coefficients, you can go uh, immediately and write the Fourier series. First is a naught, okay? So a naught plus um, summation n equals to one to infinity, uh, one not zero. Uh, unlike some some other series, uh, we start with n equals to one. A n cosine n x plus b n sine n x. Right. So what can we immediately say? Well, certainly we got a naught. A naught is three divided by two. But what about a n? Remember, we calculated a n. A n is going to be zero. So basically, we have just eliminated the cosine function inside the summation. Okay. Well, why do I say inside the summation? Well, if I want to write it out, three uh, divided by two plus now summation n equals to one uh, to infinity. What is b n? B n is given by this thing over here. So it's one divided by n pi minus one plus minus one raised to the n. Now I need to add the sine function inside the summation. Remember when we calculated b n, we had um, integrate f of x multiplied by sine n x. Once I evaluated that integral, when I put it back inside the Fourier series, not the Fourier coefficients, now coefficients now is the Fourier series. I need to re be very mindful and remember to add the sine nx function, which is over there. Right. So now the fourth step: even and odd cases. So we have to check for even and odd cases. Sometimes uh, this is we are done. We are fine with this. But what can we notice? Well, notice that n is going to run from one to infinity, and notice of this quantity over here. If this is a positive one, which it highly can be, and it certainly is, when n is even, so n is even, this is going to be uh, 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is going to be 0. So basically, we have already eliminated the whole series when n is even. So I can just simply put, if n is even, which is also to say that n is equal to 2m, this Fourier series is basically 3 uh, divided by 2 plus, and this one is going to be eliminated to 0. Okay? Because m is equal to 1. So now I run from n equals to 1, 1 divided by um, 2m pi. This, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what this is because the, the key point is over here. 2m sine 2mx. Notice that the Fourier series, I mean, we're going to, for this part of the Fourier series, we're going to get 0, this part of the summation, because this one is always going to be equal to 1. So I can basically um, discard the even cases. However, what if you know the cases were odd? So in this case, n is equals to two m minus one. Well, two n minus one. If n is equals to two n minus one, meaning to say that n is odd, the Fourier series would still exist. Okay. So it's basically three divided by two plus. I'm going to run from n to m equals to one to infinity now. But what I'm going to do? I'm going to substitute two m take away one inside all the n's, which is going to give me something like that. Two m take away one pi. Okay, and let's just see how this thing transforms. You see, if I put two m minus one over here, this is gonna be odd, correct? If this is odd, this is gonna be minus one. Well, minus one, minus minus one plus minus one is always minus two. So this thing I can always write as minus two, regardless of what m is. I've already shown you if if n is odd, this one is gonna be minus one minus one, so this is gonna be minus two. And then sine, and then I have to just simply change this as two m minus one uh, multiplied by x, right? Now, just simply rearranging, I can bring out the constants minus 2 and pi out of the summation. And after that, I will just simply 
um, let m equals to n. Now, is this possible? Yes, because m is a dummy variable. It has no significant meaning to the uh, Fourier series. As long as I can think of a dummy variable that runs from 1 to infinity, I'll be fine. It can be i, it can be n, it can be m, it can be p. It doesn't matter. So, I mean, since for convenience sake or for convention, we can just simply change it, to, change it back to n. So, n running from 1 to infinity. Uh, sorry, I'm going to bring up the minus 2 divided by pi, which is over here. And over here, it does, it does not get affected by the summation sign. It doesn't at all. So this n equals to 1 to infinity. Uh, swapping the dummy variable for con consistency sake, n take away 1 sine 2 and take away 1 multiplied by x. And this is our final Fourier series of that graph that you have seen.